Hello people. In this video, we want to look at non-stress test, okay, or NST. So basically, this is a non-stress test. You're not giving any stress to the fetus and you're just checking what? It's, it's heart rate. What are you checking of the fetus? You're monitoring the fetal heart rate. That's it. So basically here you can see the mother, one probe is connected to the mother um, mother's abdomen, right? Just one probe is sufficient uh, to the mother's abdomen because you are monitoring only one thing, that is the fetal heart rate. And the mother will give an input of the fetal movement, whether she perceives fetal movement, but that is kind of unreliable, right? Uh, sometimes it may move and she may not uh, uh, say that it has moved or sometimes she... Uh, may uh, mark it at a wrong place that it has moved okay so we will not bother about the fetal movement let us look at this uh, non-stress test what you're seeing here above this is the uh, fetal heart rate okay so fetal heart rate and down here you're trying to check the ask the mother for perception of the fetal movement okay which is not reliable right so uh, if she has pressed it in the wrong place let us say she has pressed it in the wrong place so don't go that by that but look at this, the fetal heart rate is oscillatory. It keeps changing. You, your heart doesn't beat at uh, 150. It looks like 150, right? It doesn't keep beating at 150, 150, 150, 150. No. You see, there is a variation. There is a variable heart rate. Go up or down. Yes. See here how the fetal heart rate is variable, oscillatory. Some words that the textbook is using. So here you can see the heart rate of the fetus is plotted a max of 240 and uh, lower it have given 30. Usually fetal heart rate is around, what 110 to 160 isn't it? So here it is around uh, 150 right baseline which is baseline somewhere here if you see right 150. So basically this is the uh, non-stress test it is telling you what what information is it giving you? It is giving you information about the fetal heart rate right now uh, in this what are you noticing that the fetal heart rate is varying which is good right it is keeps varying and there is acceleration so can you see an acceleration here there is an acceleration here okay there's an acceleration here so uh, it means what increasing right so basically there is a acceleration usually this acceleration is it corresponds to the fetal movement okay so but this is humanly marked so understand that when the fetus moves its heart rate increases so there will be an acceleration so this non-stress test what did we tell you we told you that you are monitoring fetal heart rate and you can also monitor the movement right fetal movement uh, which is uh, human it is subjective leave that so fetal heart rate then there is something, this is non-stress test, okay. There is something else called as cardiotocography. Cardiotocography is not just the fetal heart rate, not just the fetal heart rate. Toco is what? You will also check the uterine contractions, okay. There, there will be two probes on the mother's uh, belly, we will show you. Can you see here? Something like this. So, what you can understand here is, uh, can you see the fetal heart rate on top? Top, they have marked the fetal heart rate. And here they have shown you the uterine contractions which is going from 0 to 100 in the graph, maximum it can be. But it is around um, uh, 20, right? Around 20 it is. What you should focus on at the moment is this one. Can you see that the fetal heart rate is not varying that much? It's not oscillatory, right? So this is non-reactive. This is non-reactive, not good. Non-reactive it is, okay? What you saw earlier... See, this is a reactive one. This is good. What is good? Reactive is good. So, here you can see that the there is increase of the fetal heart rate by more than, more than 15 uh, beats per minute. So, let us say if it was 150 here, right, the acceleration should be how much? The, the variation should be more than 15 beats. So, it should be at least 165 beats. Right, it should reach 165 at least. Right, so the fetal heart rate increase should be more than 15 beats per minute, and this should be there for greater than 15 seconds. Okay, so this is what is important. So, how should the acceleration be? Can can you say that 150 to 151 is an acceleration? No. So the acceleration 
there should be increase in the fetal heart rate more than 15 beats per minute for longer than 15 seconds so everything is 15 15 15 15 beats per minute longer than 15 seconds and there should be at least two such incidences in 20 minutes did that become too much guys look at this okay these are the components and scores of biophysical profile but don't bother much about it just look at this part of it non-stress test greater than two accelerations should be there and how do you define an acceleration greater than 15 or greater than or equal to 15 beats per minute change should be there for at least 15 seconds right within 20 to 40 minutes so this is the uh, good the score is 2 for non-stress test so what are you monitoring guys the fetal heart rate only the fetal heart rate we are talking about in non-stress test we are not talking about uterine contractions etc right so what are they saying in 20 to 40 minutes in 20 to 40 minutes okay wait let's draw like this you will check for 20 to 40 minutes right non-stress test you'll check 20 to 40 minutes at least two accelerations should be there and this acceleration should be more uh, the difference that right? there should have been an increase of at least 15 beats per minute in and for a duration of 15 seconds right that is a score of 2 in biophysical profile again we are telling you the only thing we are monitoring here is the fetal heart rate and the fetal movement can be uh, inputted by the mother using this uh, button okay so every time she perceives a fetal movement she can tell us if she presses wrong in the wrong place then you will be expecting an acceleration isn't it so that is why you focus more on the uh, score what did the score tell you the score just told you to check the heart rate there should be two accelerations of this much change within this much seconds right at least for that much seconds 15 seconds it should be there within 20 to 40 minutes what do you think this is guys this from here to here is how much time one minute two minutes three minutes four minutes five minutes right so each of this is one minute okay so if this is one minute and there are one two three four five six six boxes here so this much is how much one second. i think so this is one minute right yeah so this is 10 seconds mm -hmm. okay can you tell me how many seconds make one minute 60 seconds make one minute. <laughs> okay you know it so just uh, focus here guys um so if this is 150, if this is 150 here and this is 170, so the difference is around 20, isn't it? And uh, how much time did it take to achieve this? If this is 10 seconds and this is 20 seconds, something like this, right? We have understood something, 20, 20. Let us look at uh, the score, what it should be. So greater than uh, okay acceleration means what of at least greater than 15 beats per minute change okay for greater than 15 seconds within 20 to 40 minutes of starting this test okay so that is what it is and you need two such accelerations okay so but the thing is there are a lot of uh, things like um, baby could be asleep right or um, uh, that's possible so that is why what they are saying is there can be a lot of false positives and false negatives etc false positive can be there yes so that is why they are saying that this non-stress test is not the only thing that you can rely on so there are a lot of other things that go into the biophysical profile so guys uh, there are other things to check mainly amniotic fluid volume okay this is very important at least this amniotic fluid volume and non-stress test is given a lot of importance the other things like fetal movement fetal breathing fetal tone how can you check this at least fetal movement you can perceive but how will you know whether it's breathing what is the tone right all that probably you need ultrasound right so basically so this is biophysical profile so a lot of things go into the biophysical profile but as it is requiring sonography etc there is a modified biophysical profile which is focusing more on the non-stress test than the amniotic fluid volume. Anyways guys, just look at the score here, okay. If there is a score of 10, it's very good of this biophysical profile, okay. And if there is a score of 0 to 2, so they are saying almost certain fetal asphyxia. 
So guys, just look at the same thing again. The biophysical profile, non-stress test, fetal uh, movement, uh, fetal breathing movements, fetal body movements, fetal muscle tone, amniotic fluid. Same thing we told you, right? This is the biophysical profile. So this is how it's breathing. They are able to know. So guys, we are just going uh, to look further. See, if this is non-stress test, what are you checking here? Fetal heart rate, right? We told you. Uh, in cardiotocography, what are you checking? With the fetal heart rate, you are checking the uterine contractions also. The contractions from 0 to 100 they have put. You check that, right? You remember this photo where we showed you that uh, the there is no variation uh, in the, the heart rate, right? The, the accelerations, etc. This is a non-reactive, non-stress test. So that's why they are saying here NNN. Non-reactive, non-stress test is not good. Right. So what has been plotted here down? It's the uterine contractions. So this is also a kind of non-stress test only. You're not giving any stress. Then what is stress? What is stress now? Now we have to come to the question of what exactly is stress? So there is something called as contraction stress test. Okay. That is where you are, uh, the uterus is going to contract, right? And then you're checking the stress on the baby and how it is responding. That is contraction stress test. Let's look at that, just the name at least. See that stress test is here. Contraction stress test or oxytocin challenge test. So this is a different test, okay. So in this one, what are they doing? Look at that. You can see here the non-stress test has run here on, on the Big, in the beginning, non-stress test is there and then it has converted to oxytocin challenge test. That will be a stress test. Here they are giving oxytocin 8 milli units uh, per minute. Okay. So once they started, what has happened? There, there is stress, right? This side there is stress. Okay. So here what are you seeing? What do you think is happening here with the NST? At least with the available information, it looks very... Uh, there are no accelerations, not many accelerations as such. And uterine contractions again here at 20. Now oxytocin has been given. Uterine contractions are there. And after giving uh, uh, the uterine contractions are there. And here what do you see? Do you see any accelerations? Nothing much actually. So what will happen here? Actually there is, n there is late deceleration they are saying. So there is a deceleration here. Late deceleration. Looks like this. these two are. Are these the decelerations they are talking about? So this late decelerations right so what happened they did a c-section and the fetus could not be resuscitated this deceleration they don't like accelerations they like what do we like accelerations what we don't like decelerations decelerations we don't like okay we like accelerations but anyways uh, that is stress right oxytocin and all is stress now look at this one there is something called as vibroacoustic stimulation, VAS, okay. So here what is happening in vibroacoustic stimulation, they are stimulating so that the baby, if it is sleeping, right, it can go from uh, quiet sleep to active sleep. So again, it will become a reactive NST. Uh, if it becomes a reactive NST, that means it is, baby is fine, okay. So you had a non-reactive NST probably because it is sleeping and then you give some... Uh, Vibroacoustic stimulation and then your the baby sleep state changes from quiet to active sleep. That time the reactive NST you are getting after this procedure. Focus guys, after this procedure you are getting reactive NST. So it is okay. This is fine also. Okay. This procedure is also harmless. So when do they do NST case, uh, non-stress test? They will start it after 30 weeks only and they will do it twice weekly. Twice weekly. <clears throat> that means in one week they are doing twice, right? There are uh, chances of false negative, false positive, etc. Guys, so uh, it is not like it is totally foolproof. Guys, we are uh, here and there we are com covering some points about NST. Just look at this, okay? Reassuring is what? Reactive NST, which is good, okay? Non-reactive is um, where you have the decelerations or there are not much variations in the heart rate. All that will become non-reactive, non-reassuring, okay? Then, what else? So, non-stress test is a continuous electronic monitoring of the fetal heart rate along with the fetal movement. That's it. This is what you have to say for the definition. And it's uh, basically acceleration will indicate a healthy fetus. Okay. Accelerations indicate healthy fetus. 
This can be used as a screening test. Okay, you are using it only as a screening test. It is a test to identify the fetal wellness rather than the illness. You cannot identify the illness, but you can only know if it is well. Interesting. What do you say, people? Okay, slowly we are building one by one concept. Did you understand? This is just a screening test. It will uh, tell you the fetal well-being rather than the illness, right? So it's a screening test. But uh, there can be a lot of false positives, false negatives. Obviously, it's a screening test. Now, let us say if after a, a fine NST, NST is coming out perfectly fine, okay, reactive, reassuring, and all that. Still, if the baby dies, okay, if the, if something happens to the fetus, why? Why? So what are the causes? So the main reasons will be post-term pregnancy. Okay. So post-term pregnancy, what will happen? There can be uh, something sudden, right? Meconium aspiration, or there can be some umbilical cord anomaly, acute as asphyxia. What else? Amniotic fluid volume, infection, placental abruption. So um, that is why they said don't just rely on NST. You can also uh, reliable uh, rely on the other biophysical tests, right? Especially the amniotic fluid volume. So guys, so guys, uh, basically uh, what you understood is that accelerations are good, right? Accelerations are good, and de decelerations are kind of bad. But some people are saying that a small deceleration for a small time is not very significant. But if there are decelerations which are happening, many decelerations and that too for a prolonged period, those are bad. Okay. So that is what this paragraph, entire paragraph says. Repetitive, repetitive variable decelerations, decelerations which are lasting more than one minute, right? They have worse prognosis. Repetitive. If there's a repetitive deceleration, that is bad. Okay. Uh, and especially if it is combined with diminished amniotic fluid vo volume, from that time we are telling you the same thing. A non-stress test with an amniotic fluid volume check will give you the clear, uh, better picture. Okay. Just look at this point, guys. This uh, NST was started by or uh, introduced by Freeman and Lee. Okay, 1975. And what you can understand from this non-stress test is a test of fetal condition, right? It, you're checking for whom? For the fetal condition. But if you want to check about the utero-placental function, the contracts, the contraction stress test will tell you about the utero-placental function, right? So contraction stress, uh, stress test where you're giving the oxytocin, which we showed you, right? You have the NST and then you're giving the oxytocin and checking. That will tell you about the utero-placental function. So do you remember this? So this part of it, the first half part of it is what? The non-stress test and this one is the oxytocin challenge test. So this is the contraction stress test, right? This will tell you about what? <clears throat> the utero-placental function. And what will the non-stress tell uh, stress test tell you? It will tell you only about the fetal well-being. Non-stress test will tell you only about the fetal well-being. And um, the challenge test will talk to you about the uterus and the placenta. Okay. This one on this side, this test will talk to you only about the fetal well-being. Placenta is still here, but remember this is only for the fetal well-being. So that's it guys. So let's take a recap of what we have seen in this video. So our intention was to understand non-stress test. So basically this is non-stress you're not giving any stress right no oxytocin nothing <clears throat> so what you're doing you're checking only fetal heart rate and fetal movements also but that is subjective so you can see here this is a reactive non-stress test there are accelerations within 20 to 40 minutes at least two accelerations should be there and how should the accelerations be the change should be more than 15 beats per minute and the duration should be 15 seconds or more down here, you can see the mother has pressed the button and indicated that there is a fetal movement at this point. But this is subjective. So what you should focus on is only this part and there should be two accelerations in 20 to 40 minutes. 20 minutes I'm guessing at least. Okay. If uh, the baby does not move, it could be sleeping. Right. So what will they do? Vibro acoustic stimulation so that uh, they can change the sleep uh, state of the fetus from quiet to active. So where you can, after that, you should at least get a non, uh, you should get a 
reactive non-stress test. Okay, reactive is assuring. Remember, reactive is good. So basically, you will do this uh, test when after 30 weeks of gestation because the fetal movements are also more, right? And uh, here you can see this is a cardiotocography. This is a, a non-stress test plus that is the fetal heart rate, okay? Plus the uterine contractions here. So this is a cardiotocography. Cardio, this is the heart of the baby and this is the toco of the uterus, right? So the contractions of the uterus. So this is a cardiotocography where they are showing both. But anyways, we are focusing only on the NST, on the heart rate part here. So here you can see this is a non-reactive, uh, uh, non-stress test. So this is non-reassuring, not at all good. Because you can see the variations are not there. And accelerations are also not there. Right? There should be change in the fetal heart rate and there should be accelerations. At least two accelerations within 20 to 40 minutes. And what are they saying? The accelerations should be at least for 15, uh, you know, the change should be greater than 15 beats per minute and it, the duration should be at least 15 seconds, okay? Then, decelerations are bad. They don't like decelerations, especially late decelerations, that is after uterus contraction. If there's a late deceleration, they don't like. They're saying that um, one deceleration is not, uh, you know, that significant. If there are multiple decelerations and that to these decelerations are longer in duration those are bad okay again this is a reactive nst which is good right but in nst uh, there can be false positives false negatives because it is just a screening test isn't it so there are other things that you should check like amniotic fluid volume very very important amniotic fluid volume they are concerned so low amniotic fluid they don't like at all so it should be that at least two centimeters uh, in two planes right uh, should be there uh, perpendicular to each other so two into two centimeter pocket that's what they're saying here this is very very important other things like fetal breathing fetal movement fetal tone also you can check all right um, so then they interpret the score <clears throat> a score of 10 is good a score of zero is zero to two is bad then modified is where they are checking only the nst and the amniotic fluid they Okay, then we told you what uh, non-stress test is, we have told you what cardiotocography is, we have told you. No, uh, contraction uh, stress test, see this is the stress word coming here. Contraction stress test or oxytocin challenge test is where they are giving oxytocin and the uterus, uh, they are stimulate, they are making it contract. So that will be stress test, okay. Here no, we are not doing anything like that, so it is non-stress test. Also we have told you about this one, vibroacoustic stimulation test we have told you, right. Then, what else? Freeman and Lee uh, introduced this. So, it is a test of fetal condition. <clears throat> if you want to check, check about the uterus and the placental function, you'll have to do the contraction stress test. Contraction stress test is a test of utero-placental function. NST is telling you only about the fetal well-being. And that too, it's a screening test only. Right? So, accelerations are good and uh, decelerations are bad especially repetitive variable decelerations are bad and longer duration decelerations have worse prognosis so you should always monitor the amniotic fluid levels also <clears throat> diminished amniotic fluid level bad then if even after a good nst if the fetus dies mostly it will be a post-term pregnancy okay or there can be meconium aspiration umbilical cord anomaly the amniotic fluid volume had some issue, infection, um, abnormal cord position, malformations, placental abruption, all these can happen, okay? So that is why you should check amniotic fluid level and other biophysical characteristics. So we told you a non-stress test is a continuous electronic monitoring of the fetal heart rate. What are you checking here? The fetal heart rate along with the fetal movement. Whenever there is a movement, usually there will be fetal heart rate acceleration. That is the whole concept on which it is built, right? Or you can say uh, fetal heart rate increases when it moves or which occurs first. What do you think? Okay, let's uh, continue here. So basically an acceleration will indicate healthy fetus. It is a screening test. So, reactive is reassuring, 
non reactive means non reassuring okay reactive reassuring means you should have accelerations two or more accelerations more than 15 beats per minute above the baseline right that is what is important here more than 15 beats per minute above the baseline and and more than what is wrong and longer longer than 15 seconds in duration in 20 minute observation they are just giving 20 minutes for you to decide okay then because of the sleeping etc you can still do a vibroacoustic stimulation then when will you do this after 30 weeks and uh, t- twice weekly that means in a week twice is it then what else have we looked at this is a oxytocin challenge test that's it so that's all for now guys in this video hope you have understood non stress test bye bye